using baselines. Now it's time to actually learn what a baseline is and how to use it in project. By definition, a baseline is the detailed project against which actual work is tracked. It is kind of like detailed plans for your new home before you ever start to build it. It tells you how your house is going to look, what supplies you're going to need, and gives you an estimate of how much it is all going to cost before any work is actually started. A baseline in project is saved in your project file. It exists alongside any activity that goes on with your tasks. A baseline is helpful to you for several reasons. You can use your baseline and the actual activity to explain delays or going over budget. It helps you track where and when you wanted to go when you started the project with where you're actually going. It also helps you to see how close to the schedule you are keeping. After you save a baseline and get some activity going, you get baseline and data as well as baseline versus actual. You can save a baseline at any time by going to the set baseline dialog box. This is in the project tab under the set baseline option. Click on the drop down arrow and click on set baseline. This dialog box will now appear. Now you can select for the entire project or just select tasks by clicking the radio box in the for section. If you choose selected tasks, select how the baseline rolls up or summarizes changes made to the task data. Then click OK. You can also clear and reset baselines if plans, costs or anything else related to the project changes. If you want to clear the baseline for certain tasks, select them, then go to the project tab and under the set baseline drop down click on clear baseline. This dialog box will now appear. Select if you want to clear the baseline for the entire project or selected tasks. For this example, we're going to use selected tasks because that's what we've already said to select those tasks. If you wanted to clear the baseline for the entire project, you simply wouldn't select tasks. Next, from the clear baseline list, select the baseline that you want to clear. In this case, there's only the one. Then click OK. Interim plans are like mini baselines. They only save the timing information and not the resource assignments or costs. And this is only for tasks that have activity tracked on them as well as baseline start and finish dates for all tasks that haven't yet started. An interim plan is a lot smaller of a file than a baseline. It is helpful to use to record date changes but not overwrite original baseline cost data. You save interim plans using the same dialog box that you use to save your baseline. So go to the project tab and under the set baseline drop down arrow click on set baseline. However, instead of checking set baseline, you'll check set interim plan. Next use the drop down box to select the data you want to save to the interim plan. Select if you want to save interim plans for the entire project or selected tasks. If you choose to save for selected tasks, make sure you select how you want to roll up the baseline. Click OK once you're done. Sometimes even the best laid plans go awry. Maybe you're suddenly over budget or you're going to miss a very important deadline. Perhaps you have a basic idea of what went wrong because you've been managing every aspect and communicating with everyone on your team. But still, you need to be able to explain to the powers that be what went wrong and justify whatever occurred. Then, you have to fix it to save your project and maybe even your job. If you've kept interim plans, baselines and task notes, then it is going to be much easier to show where things got off track and explain exactly what went wrong. Your interim plans and baselines will show you where you got off track and why. They'll also show adjustments that you made to get past major problems. You'll also be able to show your boss that you're managing things all along and that the major problem is not because of lack of management. To view your baseline and interim plans, go to the Gantt chart view. Right click in the column area of the sheet pane and then click insert column. As you can see, you can now name the column where it says type column name. You might choose start 1 to 10 and finish 1 to 10 for an interim plan or baseline 10 for your baseline. Repeat these steps for additional columns. Your task notes should tell you about resources assigned to a task, vendor problems, as well as late deliveries. You can also use these notes to show you what went wrong and to explain why. Here are some other things you can do to troubleshoot and possibly fix problems in the project. Resource leveling. This can solve conflicts with resources that may be holding up progress on your project. Cut costs. You can sort tasks by cost. Concentrate on the higher cost tasks and trim things that are nice but you really do not need. Delete tasks to save time. Filter tasks by priority, then trash low priority ones that you might not need. Review task timing. Sort by duration with the longest tasks first. You may be able to save time this way. Review task drivers. With this, you can review why the timing for tasks is failing like it is. 
Reasons can be dependencies and constraints. To sort items, go to the View tab, and in the Sort button, click on the drop-down box. Select the most appropriate item that you want to sort by. You might sort by its start date or cost, for example. If you want to sort by additional criteria, click Sort by at the bottom of the drop-down menu. This dialog box will now appear. Choose your criteria in the Sort by field. Choose if you want to sort by ascending or descending. You can add additional sort criteria in the Then By drop-down boxes. Then click on Sort. If you want to return your original sort order, which is By ID, go to the View tab and in the Sort drop-down, click By ID. I can see what the other sorting options look like by clicking on the drop-down box and selecting another option. We already learned about filters in a previous lesson. When you're troubleshooting, filters can be extremely helpful to pinpoint what's wrong and what you need to fix. Remember, you can find filters under the View tab in the Data group. In this table here, you'll see a list of filters along with what they display. This should help you isolate any problems much easier than if you tried to sort through all the information at once, by yourself. On the left, you can see the different types of filters, such as critical, cost over budget and incomplete tasks. On the right, you can see what they display. For example, the critical filter displays tasks that have to be completed on time if you're going to make the final deadline or critical path. And cost over budget filter displays tasks that exceed budget. Incomplete tasks displays tasks that aren't complete. Late over budget tasks displays tasks that are running later than the baseline estimate and also over budget. Should start by displays tasks that were supposed to start by a specified date. Slipped and late progress displays tasks that are running late. They also have no recorded progress. Update needed is a task that should have had progress tracked by this point, but hasn't. Over allocated resources displays tasks with resources that are overbooked. Slipping assignments displays tasks involving resource work that should have begun already. Work incomplete displays tasks that should have had all work completed already. And work over budget displays tasks with more hours that have been invested in the task than you estimated.